Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Lickie here. Today, we're going to talk about double bar graphs. In the last video about statistics and probability, we looked at a set of data that was based off of grade five students and how they get to school. Now, in that situation, it was not split into boys and girls. What we're going to look at today is a different situation, and I've done some first-hand data collection and interviewed, surveyed, grade 5 students' favorite recess activity. Now, what I've done is I've split this into boys and girls. I've got my data table, just like last time, and I've got my favorite recess activity here, boys and girls, split with each of their choices. What are we going to do with that data? Well, today we're going to take that data and we're going to turn it into a graph. You may have seen in the past a bar graph that just had one set of data on it. Today's bar graph, we're going to compare both sets of data on the same graph. That's why we call it a double bar graph because there's two bars on the graph and each set of data is represented so we can compare them easily. Let's look at the parts of the graph. The first thing that we want to do when we're making a graph is put a title. The title tells the people that are looking at it what the graph is about. And it's very important when we're doing titles to remember, put the capital letters on the words that need to be capital. Grade 5 students, favorite recess activity, all of those first letters should be capitalized. When we're looking at the graph, the second part that we want to take notice of is the vertical axis. In our geometry unit, we talked about vertical and horizontal. Vertical is straight up and down. So the line that goes straight up and down is the vertical axis. What we want to do with our vertical axis is label it. What I've done is I've taken the number of students and put that on my vertical axis. As you can see right here where I wrote number of students. The next thing I want to do with the vertical axis is I want to make a scale, not a scale to weigh myself. But a scale is a division of numbers that represents the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my data and see what's the highest number that I have. In this situation, it's 21. So I'm going to have a scale that goes to at least 22 because I want to have it go higher than what I've actually got. Now, if I was going to write 1 for every single box, that's going to get a little bit crowded on my scale unless I have a huge piece of paper. So what I did is I made, I counted by twos and made my scale go up by two. So essentially every square on my paper is going to represent two students. The next thing we're going to talk about is the horizontal axis. That's the one that goes in line or parallel with the horizon or the top of your desk or the bottom of your paper, whatever you want to think. On the horizontal axis of my graph, I put the types of activities. The last thing that I want to show you about the double bar graph is the legend. Up here, I've wrote boys in blue and girls in purple. That lets me know what each of the columns or bars on the graph is representing. Now we're going to put the data from the table into the graph. I've already done that to save time. So let's look at an example. For soccer, there's seven boys that chose that as their favorite recess activity. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to soccer. I'm going to go up my scale to the mark in between eight and six and make a line, and then I'm going to make that bar. Girls, three girls chose soccer as their favorite recess activity. They're going to go, we're going to go up our bar graph or up our vertical axis and over and make our bar on three. So we can see that we've got seven boys and three girls that like soccer. Now, I've gone down the data table and I put all of that data onto my bar graph so that we can see clearly how this, these two sets of data, boys and girls, like different aspects of recess. What are we going to do with the data now that we've placed it in the graph? We're going to interpret the data and answer some questions. Some questions that we could ask, do boys or girls like playing tag more? Well, we go to our graph and we look at tag. 
and we see that clearly the blue bar is a much higher than the purple bar. So we know easily that boys like to play tag more than girls. We could ask ourselves, what is the activity that girls like the best? We'll go over here. Where is the tallest purple bar? Well, it's right here. Girls like to play grounders the best in recess. Another question that we can answer is how many girls like walking? Well, I'm going to find walking, I'm going to find the purple bar, and I'm going to go across, and we can clearly see that 10 girls like walking. Okay? That's how we interpret our double bar graph. So why do we use a double bar graph? Well, we use a double bar graph because we want to compare two sets of data on the same graph. What are the parts of the double bar graph? We want to have a title that tells whoever's looking at it what exactly the graph is about. Remember to put your capitals in the right spots. We want to have a good scale that lets us expand the data as much as possible. We don't want to have an itty bitty tiny little graph. We also want to make sure we label the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis, we want to put the names of the options that we have. We also want to put a legend that tells us what each of these bars represents. Now, one thing that I'm going to add is, if we wanted to, we could make the bars go out horizontally, or we can make them go vertical. That's a choice that you can make, and it's on personal preference alone. Great job today, guys.